Right, good morning everybody. Um, I've put together a, a handout that I'm really just going to talk to. to uh, basically, I'm going to tell you how jamming forecasting is. Um, so, if everybody's got it, and I'll uh, point out the deliberate typo as we go through. Uh, uh, in the traditions of the OBR, I'll start with the short-term economic forecasts, I'll then look at the medium-term economic forecasts, and then I'll look at the fiscal forecasts. Well, starting with the short-term forecast, if you could look at chart one and uh, the, uh, some of the initial figures of uh, table one, I'll uh, just go through some of the main features of what the OBR came up with yesterday. I think the first thing to say is that uh, if, you, uh, if you look at ch uh, chart one, you'll see that there were some very major changes in the forecast between March 2011 and November 2011, the OBR really did downgrade the forecast quite substantially. But if you compare November 2011 with yesterday's figures, then actually there wasn't that much change at all. It, it was quite interesting. I was uh, out and about on College Green yesterday and someone was talking about the uh, re upward revision to the GDP figures for 2012. Uh, when I said, what, from 0.7 to 0.8? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, that's uh, not what I describe as a revision. I regard it as a well within measurement error. And indeed, just a, a slight digression, if you look at the 2010 figures there, um, and I'll just give you an idea of how jammy some of these estimates are, is that when uh, 2010, the last budget, the March 2011, uh, the o ONS was almost estimating that growth in 2010 would be 1.3 per cent. Hey presto, by November it had gone up to 1.8%. And don't forget, they would have had the figures in for quite some time by November 2011, but by now they put it up to 2.1. So over a year, the ONS has actually revised up growth for 2010 from 1.3 to 2.1. I think that gives you some idea of just how imprecise uh, figures can be. I speak, as, uh, as Glyn was saying in the introduction, as, a, as an ex-civil servant, and uh, I was involved uh, for quite some part of my life in, uh, in what I saw, cr creative uh, statistical accounting. <laughs> um, but th so that, just to su suffice to say, a short-term forecast, not many changes. The other thing I think to point out, of course, is that uh, there's no, the, the OBR does not expect uh, a technical recession. Uh, they're expecting, if anything, growth in the first quarter of this year to be a little bit better than they did last November. Uh, perhaps no growth in the second quarter. I don't know if that coincides with the, uh, the Jubilee. I have no idea. But uh, growth for the second half of the year uh, unchanged, but better. And one of the main reasons as to why they think growth will pick up in the second half of the year is that the squeeze on incomes, that actually Matt, of course, has been talking about real incomes, uh, will actually get less painful. Uh, obviously, last year you had inflation running ahead at four, four and a half percent, earnings growth running ahead at two and a half percent. There was a very big squeeze on people's real incomes. Well, providing providing uh, the inflation uh, comes down to target and earnings uh, growth continues at about two and a half percent, you will see that squeeze <coughs> actually become a much less painful. In fact, it should be mitigated. But of course, if there's a, uh, another oil price hike, if inflation picks up again to four and a half, five percent, then the pain goes on. And indeed, oil price hikes were pointed out as one of the major risks uh, to the forecast by the OBR. Uh, the other major risk being uh, events in the Eurozone, dear boy, events in the Eurozone. And uh, well, suffice to say that back in November, of course, we were at the height of panic about this uh, wonderful currency system. Uh, to some extent the problems have been ameliorated, but my goodness me, they have not gone away as far as I'm concerned. I think the pain is still to come. But this is not a, uh, a rant about the Eurozone, this is actually about the OBR's forecast from yesterday. So those are the short-term forecasts. Looking to the medium-term forecasts, then I think there are some quite interesting features here. Um, Firstly, that uh, the OBR is expecting that after fairly weak growth last year, fairly weak growth this, this year, uh, nevertheless, by 2013 out to 2016, uh, productivity growth uh, will pick up as normal and we'll go back to having some pretty juicy uh, uh, growth rates, GDP growth rates. Well, that in itself is a very, I think, uh, questionable assumption. But, you know, forecasting is a difficult game. But that 
is of the idea of going back to those normal productivity growth rates, that is a, another very, very <coughs> major risk to the forecast, especially to the medium term forecasts. Um, how's the consumption they're expecting to pick up as the, as, as the uh, years go by? It's interesting about GGFC, which is general government uh, final <coughs> consumption, is that if you look at what happened in 2010, 2011, and even what is expected to happen this year in 2012, um, you could ask savage cuts, what savage cuts? Because, uh, in fact, GGFC grew by 1.5% in 2010, and 0.3% uh, uh, last year and 0.5% this year. And by the way, I ought to now point out the deliberate typo, um, which I trust some people have noticed, uh, that uh, the figures there, the, there are three sets of figures as you go down, March 2011, November 2011, and actually the, the third one is March 2012. That was my error last night, but I will blame the cat who was distracting me at the time. Um, but so I mean, you can you can easily say you know with with this public uh, with public spending, I would say savage cuts. What savage cuts? But look as again as the years go by into 2013 up to 2016, <coughs> what big cuts are meant to be coming through then? Really, a lot of the so-called public expenditure cuts are very back end loaded. And uh, they're also, as you see there, uh, expected to go well beyond the next election. And I know originally the political strategy was to have austerity in the first half of this parliament and then, then of course, everything be hunky-dory by 2014, 2015. Well, look, folks, that's not going to be the case. I think two, two other points here. Business investment, there's been a, a terrible tendency to over-forecast uh, the growth there. And I, I've always thought that that was a very dodgy part of the OBR's forecast, that they thought it would grow so fast when demand was so weak. Okay, I mean, there's plenty of cash in the corporate coffers, but uh, that doesn't mean to say you're going to get big business investment growth. And indeed, they've had to revise down very dramatically uh, the, the investment forecast in early part of the forecast. Net trade, well, it's done well. It did well last year, and it's expected to contribute to overall growth as we go through. Inflation, well, I've already hinted at inflation that uh, we're expecting it to fall back uh, in the second half of this year. But if there is a major oil price spike, then th that, could, uh, that could fail to be the case. That is on the economic forecast. Then very quickly on to the fiscal forecasts. Um, I just think, again, uh, what the uh, OBI did yesterday, having revised them dramatically again in November, and I think this is the, the moral of the tale, it's the real revisions were then, uh, yesterday's forecasts were, were not that different. Um, I just make uh, a couple of observations, though. Uh, obviously, for the PSB, well, I would call it the PSBR, but that's a sign of my old age. Uh, the PSNB, the Public Sector Net Borrowing, of course, before yesterday's uh, blind of a figure for the public borrowing of 15 billion for February, we were all expecting that perhaps the uh, overall totals for financial year 2011 had come out better than uh, forecast in November. But because of yesterday's really rather dreadful figure, uh, they've come out very similar. And the borrowing for, uh, the, well, the current financial year will be about 125, 126 billion, very much as forecast in November. Um, the fact that the borrowing is, is due to fall in the next financial year is largely, or a lot of it, is to do with the, the transfer of the Royal Mail pension assets onto the accounts of about 28 billion. Uh, by the way, they put on the assets, but they don't put on the liabilities, and the liabilities are greater than the assets. So that's just a little, uh, little point to note. But uh, because of the accounting conventions, and I use the word convention lightly, then it does mean that the figures look better for next year, and the figures then look better for the debt figures going forward. But having said that, I mean, you just look at those, uh, I just look at those figures and think, we are still running enormous public sector deficits. And the notion yesterday that could there become some great giveaway, some either by, uh, for goodness sake, putting up spending or cutting taxes, given those numbers, I think was just completely unfeasible. And indeed, yesterday's budget on the whole, over the cycle of the forecast, was uh, fiscally neutral. After all, last year, or the, well, should we say the current financial year, 126 billion borrowing, it's still over 8% of GDP. That is, a, to me, a horrendous figure. And even for next financial year, if you don't allow for the Royal Mail, you're still talking about 7.5% of GDP going forward. 
And the other forecasts, of course, for borrowing and for the general public finances depend hugely on the GDP forecasts that I've already, should we say, cast some doubts over. And if those GDP forecasts are not meant, then you can bet your bottom dollar that the forecasts for the public finances will turn out worse. That is the predicament this country is in. And I, I think it, uh, it can't be said too many times. And of course, when you actually see the look at the net debt figures, or the debt figures, um, look how quickly they are rising. That even on the slightly revised, slightly better figures, we're still talking about um, <coughs> one and a half trillion by the end of the forecasting period. That's absolutely dreadful, in my opinion. 76% of GDP. And uh, just very quickly, I think my final comment before we move on to the next speaker is uh, just about uh, George Osborne's fiscal targets. He's got a couple of fiscal targets. One, of course, is the uh, structural or the cyclically adjusted current budget being in balance or by the end of the five-year rolling forecast period, and thus it rolls on like father time. But uh, you can see that, uh, again, at the budget last year, they were expecting that they'd be able to hit that particular target a year early, in other words, in financial year 2014. But it was put back in November, mainly because of uh, various sort of, uh, changes to the structural, uh, the output gap forecast by the OBR, to financial year 2016, and it's still 2016. They've just about squeezed it in. Um, when it comes to the net debt, well, there is a fixed target there. A fixed target of actually having debt to GDP as a proportion falling by financial year 2015. Again, they've just about squeezed it in, uh, both last November and indeed yesterday. <coughs> Boy, that is very touch and go, and I wouldn't be surprised if those forecasts were missed. Um, I think I'll finish there, but I've just, at the, on the final page, for those who find uh, fiscal forecasts a fascinating thing, uh, some of us do, uh, I've just put in the charts just to make it a little bit more exciting. And the final thing I would say is that, as I've just said, they, they're really, they're, they're, they're hitting these targets, these fiscal targets, by the skin of their teeth, and I really mean the skin of their teeth. And how have they done it? Because last November they did actually put in very hefty spending cuts. They just pencil them in for the final two financial years of the forecast period that they were just penciled in. In other words, austerity now, austerity in the next two or three years, austerity right through almost to the end of the decade. And that's the main message of this. And I still suspect they'll struggle to hit their fiscal targets. So there you are. Cheer up, folks. <laughs> it's great.